Well, Cortland Sutton got something today from the Denver Broncos. It's orange blue today to Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason. And yeah, the Broncos gave Court a little something, right? They gave him incentive is what they gave him. They gave him uh, a chance to bump that outlay up north of $50 million. Um, that's what basically that's what it came down to court. And I think this is actually pretty fair for all sides, because as we discussed, when this has come up throughout the last few months, Cortland Sutton's contract on a per year basis is about right. It's in, you know, it's in the low twenties in terms of average per year value for a wide receiver. And that's where his production has been in the two years of his contract so far. This gives him a chance to get more, but he's got to earn it by being productive. And I think that's a nice compromise here for the Broncos and Quarrel and Sutton. Yeah, and I'd say that's the best word to use, Mace. Nobody really loses face here because he yeah. wanted a little more, and the Broncos gave him a little more. And, you know, now it's go time. And Sutton, out of practice today, looked really good. Like Looked like the Sutton of old. Yeah. Unlike uh, last month when he was out there and uh, – the limited action he had coming off the ankle surgery dropped, you know, dropped a couple of passes. Uh, wasn't really doing all that much. Uh, actually, was out there with the offense and uh, looked uh, pretty comfortable today. Yeah, looked comfortable out there. And now moving forward, we'll see what Cortland Sutton can do. What's the vision? You know, I, I've uh, I thought you about sound like Sean, Sean Payton now. Today. Well, I I thought about asking Sean today, and then there was. A, probably enough Sutton questions. So I didn't want to belabor it, but like he studied Michael Thomas, but I don't see him as the slant God, you know, no. I, I see him as the number one by default. Do they have a number one really? And we've seen the guy today, Josh Reynolds, you know, we've, and we've seen him all off season. Like he's been doing the stuff that Sutton could have been doing. I mean, I think the number one may be a week to week thing or maybe a possession to possession thing. This very similar to what we say about edge rushers. We're maybe talking about a wide receiver core that doesn't have an ace, like a pitching rotation that doesn't have an ace, but you've got a good number two. Uh, your three is better than average. Your four is like a number three. So you've got quality depth. That being said, I think you're, that's where it is. Maybe when you start. I think you're going to see a number one emerge, but who is that likely to be? Is it Cortland Sutton? Is it Josh Reynolds? Is it somebody like Marvin Mims Jr.? And long-term I'd say he's one to consider, even though Mims doesn't fit what Sean Payton keeps talking about. And has said the last couple of days that he wants big receivers and, this led him on one of his riffs earlier today. We'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting. Like, he talks about big receivers. Cortland Sutton's a big receiver. You know, Troy Franklin is six foot two. He doesn't have, he's 175 pounds, but he's got length. Devon Vele is a big receiver. Tim Patrick is a big receiver. Josh Reynolds isn't so much big as he's long, but these are all receivers who they're not, you know, five, nine, five, 10, you know, guys running around. These are players who have the body types to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. So, and, and it also to outreach smaller cornerbacks as well. So, they say everybody's got a type. Sean Payton has his type. And at least physically, Cortland Sutton is that. We'll find out if the skill set fits. Yeah, see if the skill set fits. But if we think of Sean Payton receivers, we think of Marcus Colson and Michael Thomas. And they were big. Big guys. Yeah. Now, there was room for Devery Henderson, who wasn't quite as big as those guys. Sure. You know, Brandon Cooks. And, and there was room with for him. Brandon Cooks, right? So it's not a hard and fast template. But if you were to go through Sean Payton's receivers, you'd say probably about 60 to 70% of them fit the big template. You put in the big box. You didn't go buy them at a big box store, but you put them in the big 
box. Right, right. Their category, large and in charge, hopefully for the Denver Broncos. So Sutton got it done. Uh, what should we play first? Peyton on meeting with Sutton? I think that's the one where he doesn't ramble yet. Let's so start there. He had the meeting with Sutton. Let's play what Coach had to say earlier today. I didn't spend a lot of – like he and I would have talks just relative to what his summer plans were. Um, and, look, that that was – you know, really his agent, George, visiting. And and, and I, I don't think there were a lot of discussions and, and I don't think there was a lot of change to the way it was structured. Um, but it's good to have him here. Good to have him here. You know what? You hear him say that. Like, he just talked about what your plans are for summer football type stuff. And... Very much, but Sean Payton, I think, is the type of coach who maybe wants to let George Payton make the contractual sausage. Sure. Yeah. You know, I'll give you my vision for this roster and the types of players who work for it. And then you take care of the, the contract details and the money and that sort of thing. It's a reason why this relationship might work. So that also creates a situation where, you know, Peyton, Sean Peyton can kind of, you know, wash his hands of it. It's also how he can, okay, he can say things like last year regarding Russell Wilson, because this is what I thought about. It's like, when he says that about Cortland Sutton, he's kind of adding a layer of plausible deniability to the stuff saying, Oh, well that was between George Payton and George Russell and Wilson's agent. agent. Yeah. yeah. He, it's quite possible, at least as far as the details and the nitty gritty, it was, even though the edict regarding um, not having him in the lineup potentially there at mid season was from Sean Payton. It's possible that like, the dirty work and the details that and how things went askew PA wise actually was handed off to George Payton because, you know, he's basically, it's almost like he's saying, you know, you figure out how the numbers work. You make the sausage. I'll, I'll cook the meal. Yep. Yep. And there's one thing about this business mace that I can't stand. Uh, it's like, did the Broncos cave? Nobody caved. Nobody caved. They both it's bet. Not, I mean, the, Bron yes. the Broncos might pay him more if he earns more. Happily pay him. Yeah, more. They, if he if he hits the incentives, I'm sure they're happy to pay the extra one point five million dollars. Great. And if he doesn't, then you didn't you, you didn't get taken. I mean, the the Broncos weren't trying to get him to take a pay cut. Like that. That's the other thing here. Mm -hmm. Cortland Sutton was looking, and his side was they were looking for more money one way or the other. It's not like the Broncos were saying, Hey, we got to restructure this and give you a haircut. Right. That wasn't happening here. Right. Nor should it have been, yeah. as you mentioned, like his I number's fine. It, it was a right. It, it turned out as uh, contracts had gone up for receivers. You looked at it today. It was, it's, it's a fair deal. It, it, you know, he's a bit, you know, the production again, the two year production on the length of the contract. Yeah, he had 10 touchdowns. He was among the league leaders in 2023. He was anything but that in 2022. So you average it out. It's a, it, it was, it's fair value. And if he does well, and we don't know what the incentives are exactly, well, I'm sure we'll find those out in time. That's a, and, I mean, let's say there's a thousand yard season attached to that as one of the incentives. Let's say it's 10 touchdowns again. I think those are perfectly valid. I think it's fair to expect that if also, if you're going to have Cortland Sutton in your future plans, he needs to get back to being a thousand yard receiver. Yep. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't buy the quarterback excuse because there are plenty of top tier receivers who are putting up nice numbers without the quarterback in play i mean didn't uh bryce young uh despite his struggles didn't adam thielen have a thousand yard season for the panthers last year with I'll bryce think of young. a former panther and dj moore who's uh -huh. done it with multiple done, quarterbacks yeah. have done it with all sorts of quarterbacks right? oh yeah so yeah. that's why i you know that's 
I think that's a fair expectation if you're going to uh, bring him back for 2025. I, you know, this he's kind of in a prove it year, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that at all. Sure, kind of this team's in prove it as Sean Payton continues to build. You know, the, the questions being asked on Sports Talk Radio, like when Sean Payton feel the pressure, like uh, later. Later, come on, they're building right now. Is that what the AM mayhem is right now? When does Sean, <laughs> Sean Payton? Do? It's ass crack and ball sack mayhem in the AM. <laughs> That's right. With Rock Sean a doodle Payton doo, you're listening pressure. to Dylan Marty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, yeah. no. hey, nobody rocks like Dylan Marty. But what if somebody rocks as good as you or better? <laughs> 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 uh, that's what we do we seek the truth and speak the truth on this program and the truth is this is a good deal for both sides you know it's it's a, it's a good deal sutton's getting incentives and sutton's motivated and with all three quarterbacks although wilson was kind of we talked about it in the quarterback show earlier today um you know sutton was good with all three quarterbacks wilson wasn't putting him in good spots but you know sutton whoever it is he should get it Sut- done now Someone's going to get him the ball, although I think it's early. So they're working on different concepts day to, from day to day. I expect he's a lower percentage of his yardage to come from the nine ball than previous years. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair to say. He'll have to make himself into a slightly different type of receiver, not just a, a deep ball, jump ball guy. And that's, you know, that that worked last year worked uh, with Russell Wilson but it, it worked to a point though because the production did tail off as the season went on after that to, after that to, or, uh, that run at, at midseason it did it it did taper in the final weeks even before Wilson got benched in favor of um of Jared Stidham so yeah and with Stidham it wasn't great for the very limited time mm-hmm. that we saw him and so that's where court like I, I think his biggest work will need to be with Stidham yes um and you know Knicks will make it happen but yeah you got the solid veteran there to be your de facto number one or however you want to phrase it you know again this is good uh for the Denver Broncos good for Cortland Sutton shall we play Sean Payton kind of rambling now you ready for Rambling it? or riffing? Kind of riffing, missing some notes though. We'll, Let's talk. We'll, All uh, right. Critique that. Uh, Cause he's yeah. asked about Cortland Sutton. Yes. yes. And it gets him, it get there's, but there is, we talked about big receivers and this is where he talks about that. So yeah, let's, uh, yeah, and I was actually looking at Cortland Sutton there. Remember Sutton of course had five straight games with a touchdown and then in, um, in the next five games, including one that he uh, only played a bit of in New England, all with Russell Wilson, two touchdowns. That's why I was referring to when I said his production kind of tapered off. But you know, it was going to be hard to keep up that one touchdown a game pace all year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen. Touchdowns, ask any fantasy GM, the yeah. most difficult thing to duplicate. Although what's amazing is that despite having 10 touchdowns, including at one point uh, 10 touchdowns in, a four, in the 14-game span, he never had a 100 yard game. Mm-hmm. That's actually worth looking up. I, I may do that. I, I'm going to, I'm going to make it. You had 10 there. touchdowns and never had a hundred yard game. And I, t- I could easily make this argument. The hundred yards are more important than the touchdowns, even uh-huh. though you score or whatever, but it's about moving the ball. It's about having opportunity. Yeah. A nine yeah. ball looks great. It's all, it makes sports center, but this ain't about that. It's not fantasy yeah. football, baby. And the 100 yards, if he had had 10 100-yard games, that would have been much more significant than 10 touchdowns. And I think Sean Payton would have been happier with that because, to use the old Hank Stram quote, he does want to matriculate the ball down the field. Mm-hmm. Yep. Frustrated defense. Uh, let's yeah. play Coach Riffing and missing some notes uh, talking about <laughs> Cortland Sutton. They, they'd been working credit, uh, George and – Cortland's agent and you know they spend a lot of time in the summer just discussing it um I'm not even quite sure what the specifics are you know and and it's good to have him back out here uh he provides leadership as well as uh a skill set that we that we um that we like and uh and just as we 
talked about the running back room, that that position group is going to be interesting as you guys look at it, you know, and try to put together and piece together. It's a big group um, size-wise. And uh, first year I ever coached in the NFL in 1997, I believe, in Philadelphia, we played the 49ers. I want to say it's 97. could have been 98. And, but it was at the old veteran stadium, and I remember when the Niners receivers walked out, and it was Jerry Rice, and it was John Taylor, and it was Stokes, and I couldn't get over how they looked. And, and there is a prototype. That doesn't mean that they can't be smaller, then they have a different skill set. But in this league, that's what we're looking for, and this is a, this is a big group. Play the follow-up there real quick. Okay, here's Peyton asked from Mike Kliss about yes. something else. Who? Uh, not at that time yet. This is 97. This is 97. He comes later. Okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, Terrell Owens was a 1996 draft pick. <laughs> um. So, yeah, the Niners did come to Philadelphia in 1997. It was a Monday night football game. Jerry Rice did not play that night. Jerry Rice was actually on the shelf at that time with a torn ACL. J.J. Stokes was there. Terrell Owens was there. T.O. was there. By the way, T.O. actually led the Niners in receiving yardage that night as they beat Philadelphia. Like, it's, you know, (laughs) shit. He got the spirit of it right, but not the... (laughs) And John Taylor, he ended his 49er career after the 1995 season. Right. So Taylor had been gone for a year. (laughs) Taylor, T.O. Oh, it was like I heard that. Like, in my head, it's, um, you know, hey, we're talking about 80s or 90s, you know, rosters, that kind of thing. That's right there in my wheelhouse. And I'm like, uh, no, man. I, I, I can my in my in my mind's ear. It's going eh, like on Family Feud, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, JJ Stokes, ding. <laughs> Jerry Rice, <laughs> eh, injured. To well, he wasn't. Eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my mind, I was uh, like, I well, okay, <laughs> we get it, right? There's yes. a, a a type, and then. There's a preference, you know, yes. he has a type, he has a preference, but it's not like he can't make it work. Marvin Mims could be the number one receiver this year. Yes. I like the way I said this on Stokely and Josh today. He's, he's grabbing the ball out of the air. Yeah. Like he's not letting it come to his body. He's not waiting for it. When the ball's there, he snatches it out of the air. So Marvin Mims is very motivated to, yeah. you know, produce more as a receiver this year. For sure. <laughs> He wants to be more than a returner. I think last yes. year, yes, the lack of opportunities as the season went on frustrated him. And I can't blame him. It frustrated me. I mean, I've lost it thinking about it sometimes. How you had this guy. Yes, he needed to grow some branches on the route tree. I get, you know, you get that. But how you weren't finding ways to get him on the on the field and all and the response is, you know, when it's brought up, it's, you know, you know, well, you know, admitting Sean paid admitting they should have gotten him more on the field mm-hmm. more. And I'm thinking, yeah, who's in charge of that? <laughs> the, the, the one person in that building that has the most control over the snaps is the head coach, right? Yep. All he needs to say is, I want to see Marvin Mims Jr. more. And yeah, yeah, things get kind of carried away over the course of the season. I'll never forget, or even play calling. I'll never forget uh, having a conversation with Adam Gase after the Broncos lost in St. Louis 10, year, or 10 years ago. The day after saying he, he, he screwed up because he, didn't, he forgot to run the ball. Mm-hmm. And yep. I know we may sit there and be like, well, how? I mean, you're calling the plays you're right there but that was one game in the moment yeah in the moment forgetting like with with mims there should have been more opportunities of course all the same time part of what mims does is quickness and uh getting you know he made obviously the the deep plays against chicago and against um and against washington but big part of his game is short to intermediate right Mm mm-hmm 
and uh, who wasn't throwing there. When this game is built there, everyone look up our friend Doug Farrar, who we're going to have to get back on the show. He just yeah. recently released an article from Athlon where he talked about zero to one step drops. And in 2020, it was like 60% of the plays were zero to one step drops. It's 75% now. Yeah. This game is short to intermediate. That's what it is. And Mims can dominate. We can't, and you know, not to, not to, we're not, we can't reveal, but so much, but uh, the Broncos percentage is going to look more like what Doug Farrar suggests. Yes. Than it did last year. Yep. And it looks better. Frankly, it gives the quarterbacks a shot. I mean, Zach Wilson hasn't looked great, but he looks passable when it's zero to one step dropping and getting it out of there fast. The things break down for Zach Wilson when the clock starts to tick. Right. right. And right. he's, you know, beyond he's beyond the structure. And you know, that's when he starts uh, moving around. That's when he scrambles in seven on seven. Right. Like, that's when he gets himself in trouble. And yeah. as we wrap up today's show, as the clock is ticking on this show, Mace, I'll, I will just say this just to tie a bow on it. Marvin mm -hmm. Mims is not happy. Okay. He's not unhappy. Like he's all super pissed off, but he wants to prove himself as a receiver. It's 1000% yeah. obvious. Yes. There's, okay. there's an edge to him. And I like that. I like that. I like it with an mm -hmm. edge. We like it when you help us out on YouTube. How can you do that? Mace? Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you never, never miss, miss a vid. vid. That's right. He's Andrew Mason. You follow him on all the socials at Mace Denver. I'm at Cecil Lammy saying OBT's BFD. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and stay frosty. <laughs>